Hello everybody, my name is Sheila and this is like my first booktube video ever, um, but I wanted to make a video about Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. Yeah, I really did not like this book, which I'm sure you will find out if you continue watching. I totally forgot to mention this when I was actually filming this video with the tripod, but I gave this a 3 stars on Goodreads. Uh, unfortunately, I really did not enjoy this book, which I know is a very unpopular opinion on booktube and also on Goodreads, on Tumblr, everywhere really. A lot of people really enjoyed this book, but I just felt that it was a disappointment. I thought that the series was very good, like uh, Lady Midnight had a very strong start, but unfortunately I really did not feel that this book was for me. I bought this book without really reading any reviews of it because I had read all of Cassandra Clare's other Shadowhunters books and I read them purely because like I loved the rest of the books. I loved the short stories, the novellas, I loved the other series. This one was just a letdown. Probably my most disappointing read of the year. I was really excited about it. I didn't really want to know any spoilers. One of my biggest issues, and this is obviously spoilers, <laughs> so please click away if you have not read the book or finished it, gotten all the way to the end because I'm talking about the end right now. The end of the book really was like a hot mess, in my opinion. It's like everything was kind of confusing and like disorienting up until that point, but then the end with all the death scenes that happened, it didn't seem like it really had a purpose. And I've read interviews with Cassandra Clare. She planned for Livy to die. As soon as she introduced Livy, she knew when, where, and why. At that moment, it didn't really seem like it had a point. And I'm sure in the final book that we're gonna figure out why she killed Livy. I kind of understand why she killed Robert, because it was like everything was going well. The entire book was disorienting up until the point where Emma and Jules went and talked to the Inquisitor and everything seemed to be working out for them. She was going to get sent away, she was going to get exiled, they were going to figure everything out with Magnus, then Magnus got sick and then everything happened with Annabelle, which was very scary. I was like, oh, everything is going to be fine, and then Kieran didn't even get to talk, Annabelle killed a bunch of people, which was a mess. One reason that I think that I was not really that big of a fan of this book is that I've noticed in trilogies that it sometimes it's difficult for the second book to be really good and make you want to read the third book because you had the first book, which in this case was Lady Midnight, which was an absolutely amazing book. I have loved everything that Cassandra Clare has written in the Shadowhunters series, all of them. <laughs> I've read everything up until now and I really enjoyed Lady Midnight. I obviously had issues with it, like the treatment of Kieran, who was my favorite character in this entire series. I love him. I felt that his and Mark's relationship was set up very well in the first book. And the one thing that Cassandra Clare was saying was that they, they were only in love with each other or they had feelings for each other because they were the only people who were around for each other. Like, maybe it was because it was lust-based, maybe it, it was for other reasons, but that was like, that was what I felt was coming off from that. Like, that's what she wanted you to think, is like, this is the justification for why the relationship's not going well. But, in my opinion, that's exactly what Jules and Emma's relationship is, is just lust-based. Because every time you see them, like, talking, communicating about their feelings for each other, it usually ends in a sex scene. And I feel like it's not necessary. It makes me very uncomfortable. Jules is a character. I don't really like him. He acts like he's such a caring person and he is for his family and for Emma, but for other characters, he will do anything to make sure that his family is safe, even if it means risking the lives of others or hurting other people. His family is his priority and I feel like that makes him a morally great character and having that as a main character for this story makes me a bit uncomfortable reading that and seeing that this is what people are supposed to think like this is the relationship you should want to have this man would kill for you like yes that's nice but like not actually like you don't actually want that you like you want a nice guy who you can trust. I really felt that this series is delving deeper into the cult piece, into the politics of the Shadowhunters world, and this is of course something that we have been exposed to in the last few novels. But with the events of the Mortal Instruments series and the cult piece coming about, I felt that like you finally see like what the Clave really thinks about people. Like seeing the cohort was awful because I can see its like basis in today's politics and how people treat people in the real world, not just in fiction, not just in urban fantasy, in the real world. It really reminds me of not only things that have happened in the past, but also things that are like coming back up right now. They're writing the tales of the cold piece. They're saying, this is like, these are the bad downworlders. 
and every other downworlder should also be restricted because we never know when they're gonna do what the fairies did. And that's not really the way to go about doing things because that's kind of like, these people hate us, so everybody else might hate us? Maybe you should just like think about yourself and like how you can fix yourself to be like better people so people don't want to kill you. Maybe that's just me. But also, you can definitely see the real life aspects of this with the registry that they're trying to do for the uh, warlocks. It's awful because it has ties to the holocaust. But not only that, currently with the Islamophobia in this country, which is absolutely horrendous and not based in fact, based in prejudice, based in stereotyping, that is another thing that people have said. They're like, oh, we're going to create a registry. And it's like that you have clearly not learned from past mistakes, even if they're not your own mistakes. Like, do you really think that the clave is so disconnected from the world that they don't know what the fucking Holocaust is? Because I'm sorry, that's impossible. Everybody knows what the Holocaust is. And if you cannot learn from mistakes, do you honestly think this is going to end well? No. All the politics in this books were so convoluted and that's the awful thing is the politics in real life are also pretty convoluted and confusing and awful and don't make any sense and yet they're still happening and that's not fair. That's like not fair to anybody who's like actually getting affected by the decisions that are being made. For trilogies I feel like it is so difficult to have three solidly good books and I know I have read trilogies that have been good and I know I've read longer series that have been good but this series kind of reminds me of another series that I had issues with, and that was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I really, really enjoyed the first book, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but the second book, I really did not like it. And I felt that the third book was not enough to make up for the things that I hated about the second book. You build up this really interesting world, and then all these things happen, and there's so much tension and drama, and it just feels like... It's just too much. And that's what I was getting from this book. A lot of it had to do with the multiple perspectives, which I know we have seen in other Cassandra Clare books, but this one it was just like, every time there was like a line break, it was just another character and it took me a few minutes to figure out who I was reading, whose perspective it was. You should be able to figure that out right away. I feel like you should be able to know what you're reading and know who you're reading. And that was just something that I felt this book was lacking. Back to my favorite character, which I know I mentioned earlier, is Kieran. Kieran and Mark's relationship in Lady Midnight was possibly my favorite part of that book. I felt that it was it was something that was good. It was like there was all this like mayhem and everything, but they still held on to this one thing that was good about their lives. And I really enjoyed that. In this book, with Kieran not remembering his actions, what he did, the retributions of those actions, like what Mark felt and how he essentially broke up with him, although they weren't officially dating, I felt that that was just, it was like miscommunication, which is my biggest pet peeve, because they didn't want to tell Kieran what was going on because they wanted to use him, and it's like, if you love a person, even if you're upset with them or you've had it falling out, you shouldn't use them for anything. Now it seems like Cassandra Clara is going in a uh, polyamorous direction with the relationship, with the inclusion of Christina. I personally do not like Mark and Christina together. I think that Mark and Kieran are interesting, and I am interested in seeing how she conveys this in her books, because Sandra Claire does a great thing with representation, where even if it's not the best representation that you can have, she still puts it in there. Like, in this book, she had a transgender character named Diana. Another relationship I loved in this book was her and Gwen. Gwen? I don't know. I loved it so much. But I felt like the that piece of representation kind of read more like a Wikipedia page about like what it means to be transgender. Cassandra Clare might have wanted to do a little bit more research reading books, maybe books written by transgender authors but with transgender characters to know exactly how to introduce this. It was fantastic that she included a character who is on the spectrum somewhere which Kit says and Julian has absolutely no idea what the hell the spectrum is. You would think that the fact that they're like the only institute with the computer, that they would actually like research stuff. But you know, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to have Ty being a character that's on the spectrum, I felt that it was very important for representation. Having books that are solely about being gay or solely about being autistic, I feel like those are obviously amazing. But being able to um, incorporate these things... These things that are so, they're so common, they're so important for people to know about, incorporating those into like very famous and very well-loved series and by very well-loved authors, an urban fantasy about this, 
I feel like it's so important that just because you incorporate all these other things into your story that that doesn't mean that you can't have these very diverse characters. That is definitely something that I enjoyed from this book is having um is seeing a lot more of these diverse characters, seeing someone who is on the spectrum, possibly autistic, having a transgender character, and bisexual characters, possibly that polyamorous relationship that I mentioned before. Cassandra Clare is trying very hard. She is definitely trying by having this series that, like, I feel like started out with, like, the basis. Like, here is this gay character, here is this bisexual character, and now she's having all these things that, like, people might not know that much about. And I think that's amazing. Another thing that I had a bit of an issue with was you have Drew meeting Jamie, who is the brother of Perfect Diego, who, by the way, I hate. I hate that guy. I'm not a fan. <laughs> and also the best friend of Christina. I got Predator vibes from Jamie. Be Drew's 13, and she definitely looks older than that, which is mentioned a plethora of times. When I remember at one point he, like, he thinks that she's older and she doesn't want to tell him because like here's this cute boy is in my room like I'm not gonna tell him that I'm actually 13 years old. Another thing was then when she picked up the thing that he left behind in her room she got the vision of the child. Oh my god. So I have heard theories and I honestly believe some of the ones that I've heard of who the child is and that also makes me really uncomfortable because I hate Jonathan. Like Clary's brother, Jonathan? Not Jace, obviously. Clary's actual brother, Jonathan. Like, I know people who liked him, and I was like, how the hell did you like that guy? He was- oh my god, he was so bad. But there are theories that that is the son of the Seely Queen and Jonathan, because as we know, they had somewhat of a relationship in the Mortal Instruments series. And so I'm really nervous on what's gonna happen with that kid. <laughs> Another thing that I had a bit of an issue with was Arthur's death didn't really seem to have the significance that it should have. Like, he sacrificed himself for his family, which Julian did for, like, the, <laughs> the entire rest of their lives. I'm not saying that he should have died, but, like, they didn't really even know Arthur. He was always, like, up in the attic reading and being, like, his scholar. And it's, like, even when they found out that he died and that he died for them, like, everybody was kind of just, like, they, they, <laughs> they didn't really have, like, emotional attachment to it. They were very detached from the issue. They were just kind of like, oh, Arthur's dead? Look at all these other problems we have. Which was really weird, because they're such a close-knit family, but it was kind of like, all the Blackthorns, and then Arthur's, like, over there. <laughs> like, she gave us a false sense of security, thinking that things were gonna go okay, and I understand that it's, like, this is realistic, and like, things don't always go okay, but like, when you have this giant, like, this book is huge! It's like, one of the biggest books on my bookshelf, like, when Sarah J Maas writes huge books, she like, cuts, she makes the pages thinner so that like, it's a smaller book. Cassandra Clare does not do any of that. She pulls out all the stops, she got like, the thick pages, like, this book is huge. And to be so confusing throughout, to make me so, like, uncomfortable throughout with different things that happen, by the end, you're hoping something's gonna be good. And like I mentioned before with Daughter of Smoke and Bone, that series, the second book was not good in my opinion, and that was personal opinion, that was personal issues that I had with it. That's the thing I'm so nervous about, is that the third and final book in this series will not be enough to make up for the <laughs> awful things that happened in this book. And that's really not something that I think I'm okay with. So while I honestly do not think I will be continuing with this series, I definitely do think that if you want to see all this representation, you want to see these characters that everybody seems to really love, I understand that my video is a bit of an unpopular opinion. I just thought that I wanted to get what I had to say out there. I wanted people to know that if they had issues with this book, they weren't alone. I hope that some people at least found that they could relate to some of this review. I was originally going to write this review on Tumblr, and then I realized that I'm better at talking about things, even though I do go on lots of tangents. Um, I've always wanted to do booktube, and so you might find some more videos coming your way soon. So thank you for watching this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, or you want to see more reviews, or comment below on what you thought of the book, anything you wanted to say that you felt that I covered or didn't cover, anything really. Just let me know what you thought. And if there are any books that you think I should or should not read because of my opinions, please let me know. Okay, bye.